Guess what? The Earth is facing a mini ice age within 10 years. Well, Rush is right about one thing. This is a guess. I was going to put the next Golden Crocodile nominee into this slot, but I find that instead I have to whack another unscientific myth back into its hole, something that, of course, has gone viral on the Internet. We're headed for a mini ice age. Who says so? Well, scientists do. I have that on good authority, because here's the Daily Mail telling us we face a mini ice age within ten years because of a drop in sunspot activity, and in the very second line the Daily Mail tells us this claim comes from scientists. So since we now know this comes from scientists, we don't really need to read the article. Oh, all right, if you insist. I'll read through it so I can get the names of these scientists for all you sceptics out there. Frank Hill of the NSO, a scientist, says the solar cycle may be going into some sort of hiatus. OK, nothing about a mini ice age there. But Dr. Richard Ultrock, also a scientist, says the sun may be going into some sort of state from which it may take a long time to recover. Uh, OK, still no mini ice age. Experts, not named, say the sun has been unusually quiet for about four years. Well, that's well known, but still nothing about a mini ice age. And David Hathaway, a scientist from NASA, predicts that this cycle will turn out to be the weakest in a century. No mini ice age. Scientist Matt Penn of the NSO says solar magnetic fields which cause sunspots have been decreasing since 1998. OK, that's in all the scientific literature, but what happened to this mini ice age? We have four named scientists and a number of unnamed experts, all telling us we may be in for an unusual hiatus in sunspot activity, but not one of them supports the headline that we may be headed for a mini ice age. The headline is, of course, the conclusion of scientists at the Daily Mail. Limbo and the Mail weren't the only ones to pull this hypothesis out of thin air. It's official, wrote James Dellingpole in the Daily Telegraph. A new ice age is on its way. It's official? Well, which official body announced it? No one who was quoted in the article. Dellingpole, the man who's right about everything, apparently, simply copied and pasted what he read on internet blogs and then embellished it. Fox News even called this made-up mini-ice age the science story of the century. And the way from the mainstream media, the internet blogs were on fire. Something called the Global Warming Policy Foundation, sounds important, not only said the Earth may be headed for a mini-ice age within the next ten years, but that that announcement had come from scientists at the US National Solar Observatory. What? All right, I've fed these silly media organizations enough rope. Now let's pull it in and hang them by their balls. We'll start by wading through all this bullshit and trying to find an actual source. In fact, this media paroxysm all started with a paper at the 2011 annual meeting of the Solar Physics Division of the American Astronomical Society. Interesting how government researchers are corrupt liars when they say the Earth is warming, but the model of integrity when they're thought to be suggesting that the Earth is cooling. Based on the text the media used, their speculation seems to be based on an NSO press release that accompanied the paper. Nowhere does it say we're headed for a mini ice age. The closest any of the media organizations got to admitting that the entire mini ice age story was based on their own speculation was when Frank Hill, lead author of the paper, said he wouldn't discuss the effects of a quiet sun on temperature or global warming. Ooh, conspiracy, keeping secrets, hiding the truth! No, it's just that he's a solar physicist, not a climatologist. And neither the Mail nor any of the other media organizations bothered to talk to a climate scientist to see what the repercussions might be. In fact, all they had to do was spend five minutes searching through the scientific literature, and they would have come across this paper by Fulner and Ramsdorf, published last year. A slowdown of solar activity has been discussed for some time because of the lack of sunspots over the last four years. Fulner and Ramsdorf calculated that another period of low solar activity, equivalent to the Maunder minimum, would result in global cooling of no more than 0.3 degrees centigrade. But that has to be set against the expected rise in temperatures due to a doubling of CO2 from pre-industrial levels, expected to be between 2.5 and 4 degrees centigrade. Why didn't any of the media organizations bother to check the scientific literature? <laughs> oh, OK, stupid question. 
And there's something else that gives away the fact that raging hormones are driving this story rather than brain cells. These journalists and bloggers seem so convinced that global warming is a scam, they never even considered that carbon dioxide could overcome this predicted cooling. Instead, they seem to think that solar cycles drive everything and spewed the most ludicrous nonsense about how this exposed the whole carbon dioxide global warming agenda. Their fingers have been on the trigger for so long, waiting for evidence to shoot holes in climate science, that the merest hint of a slowdown in solar activity is enough to make them fire off both barrels. Scientists try to have it both ways on global warming, was the headline in the blog New American. But leaving aside that this prediction of a mini ice age comes entirely from the media, there's only one way scientists have it on long-term climate change, and that's been repeated ad nauseam in their research papers and on my channel that long-term temperature changes are driven by solar irradiance and carbon dioxide levels. Whether solar activity increases or decreases in the future, it still follows this formula. Frank Hill obviously got so fed up with all this media speculation that he added a paragraph to the NSO press release specifically stating that he was not predicting another mini-ice age, and he repeated Fulner and Ramstorff's estimate of 0.3 degrees for the net cooling effect of a slowdown in solar activity. Will Hill's statement make a difference to those who are now telling us to expect a mini-ice age? Of course not. Haven't you been paying attention? This is the science story of the century!